good morning students we are moving to the 14th video of software engineering and project management class in this class we will learn about the topics software prototyping and software requirement specification these two topics are the last two topics of module 2 software prototyping a prototype is an initial version of a software system that is used to demonstrate concepts try out design options and find out more about the problem and its possible solutions rapid iterative development of the prototype is essential so that costs are controlled and system stakeholders can experiment with the prototype early in the software process a software prototype can be used in a software development process to help anticipate changes that may be required one the requirement engineering process a prototype can help with elicitation and validation of system requirements then in the system design process a prototype can be used to explore particular software solutions and to support user interface design system prototypes allow users to see how well the system supports their work they may get new ideas for requirements and find areas of strength and weakness in the software furthermore as the prototype is developed it may reveal errors and omissions in the requirements that have been proposed a function described in a specification may seem useful and well defined however when that function is combined with other functions users often find that their initial view was incorrect or incomplete the system specification may then be modified to reflect their changed understanding of the requirements a system prototype may be used while the system is being designed to carry out design experiments to check the feasibility of a proposed design different activities are involved in software prototyping the diagram represents the various process of activities and the result of each process or activity is represented in the rectangle the first activity include establish prototype objectives the objectives of the prototyping should be made explicit from the start of the process second activity is define prototype functionality to develop a system to prototype the user interface to develop a system to validate functional system requirements or to develop a system to demonstrate the feasibility of the application to managers then third activity is developing prototype that is to decide what to put into and perhaps more importantly what to leave out of the prototype system to reduce prototyping costs and accelerate the delivery schedule we determine what to leave out and what to include you may decide to relax non functional requirements such as response time 
and memory utilization error handling and management may be ignored unless the objective of the prototype is to establish a user interface the last activity of software prototyping is prototype evaluation provision must be made during this stage for user training and prototype objectives should be used to derive a plan for evaluation users need time to become comfortable with a new system and to settle into a normal pattern of usage there are several approaches to prototyping when we outline the requirements the two prominent prototypes are evolutionary prototyping and throw away prototyping evolutionary prototyping results with the delivered system whereas throw away prototyping results in the executable prototype plus system specification details let us see in detail about evolutionary prototyping and throw away prototyping in evolutionary prototyping an initial prototype is produced and refined through a number of stages to the final system to deliver a working system to end users the development starts with those requirements which are best understood evolutionary prototype should be used for systems where the specification cannot be developed in advance for example in a system or in user interface systems evolutionary prototype is the best method evolutionary prototyping is based on techniques which allow rapid system iterations actually in evolutionary prototyping verification is impossible as there is no specification validation means demonstrating the adequacy of the system now let us discuss the advantages of evolutionary prototyping it is accelerated delivery of the system that is rapid delivery and deployment are sometimes more important than functionality or long term software maintainability that is one advantage of evolutionary prototyping then user engagement with the system is second advantage of evolutionary prototyping not only is the system more likely to meet user requirements they are more likely to commit to the use of the system however there are some problems with evolutionary prototyping first problem is related with management management problems existing management processes assume a waterfall model of development specialist skills are required which may not be available in all development teams second problem with evolutionary prototyping is maintenance problem continual change tends to corrupt system structure so long term maintenance is expensive third problems with evolutionary prototyping is contractual problems some parts of the requirements for example safety critical functions may be impossible to prototype and so don't appear in the specification an implementation has no legal standing as a contract now let us discuss second type of prototyping that is throw away prototyping a practical implementation of the system is produced to help 
ഡിസ്കവർ റിക്വയർമെൻറ്റ് പ്രോബ്ലംസ് ആൻഡ് ദെൻ ഡിസ്കാർഡ് ദ സിസ്റ്റം ഈസ് ദെൻ ഡെവലപ്ഡ് യൂസിങ് സം അതർ ഡെവലപ്മെൻറ്റ് പ്രോസസ് ത്രോ എ പ്രോട്ടോടൈപ്പിംഗ് ഈസ് യൂസ്ഡ് ടു റിഡ്യൂസ് റിക്വയർമെൻറ്റ്സ് റിസ്ക് The throwaway prototype should not be considered as a final system. The throwaway prototype should not be considered as a final system. Some system characteristics may have been left out. There is no specification for long term maintenance in throwaway prototyping. The system will be poorly structured and difficult to maintain. disadvantages actually throw away prototype is not a recommended system it may be impossible to tune the prototype to meet non functional requirements the prototype is inevitably undocumented the system structure will be degraded through changes made during development normal organizational quality standards may not have been applied with throw away prototypes now we are moving to the last topic of module 2 software requirement specification or software specification after the requirement engineering process before starting the detailed design the specification should be done so requirement specification is the activity of translating the information gathered during the analysis activity into a document that defines a set of requirements two types of requirements may be included in this software specification document one user requirements which are abstra- which are abstract statements of the system requirements for the customer and end user of the system second software specification document is system requirements system requirements are more detailed description of the functionality to be performed in the system there are different types of software system requirements functional requirements non functional requirements and domain requirements are the three major types of requirements functional requirements describe the requested functionality or behavior of the system services that is functions reactions to the inputs exceptions modes of operations are all included in the functional requirements it depends on the system the software and the users functional requirements can be expressed at different levels of detail sometimes user functional requirements sometimes system functional requirements etc for a system it is desirable to have a complete and consistent set of functional requirements functional requirements should be complete that is all required system facilities need to be defined and it should be consistent that is there are no contradictions should occur in the functional requirements second type of software system requirement is non functional requirements non functional requirements represent constraints on the system and its functionality performance constraints compliance with standards constraints on the development process are some of the non functional requirements many apply to the system as a whole non functional requirements are more critical than individual functional requirements non functional requirements are more difficult to verify there are different kinds of non functional requirements for example 
product requirements or organizational requirements or external requirements third type of software system requirements are domain requirements it can be either functional or non functional and reflect the particular particularities of the application domain domain requirements indicate specific computations additional functionality or constraints on other requirements when we prepare software specification there are we expect some characteristics for a good software requirement specification it should be correct that is an srs is correct if and only if every requirement stated therein in one and the software shall meet then unambiguous characteristics means an srs is unambiguous if and only if every requirement stated therein has only one interpretation then complete an srs is complete if and only if it includes the elements like all significant requirements whether related to functionality performance design constraints attributes or external interfaces then we say it as complete only if there is responses to both valid and invalid inputs also full label and references to all figures tables and diagram in the srs and definition of all terms and units of measures are required then consistent means an srs is consistent only if no subset of individual requirements described in it and stability means an identifier is attached to every requirement to indicate either the importance or stability of that particular requirement then srs is verifiable that is every requirement stated therein should be verifiable then it should be modifiable that is its structure and style are in such a way that any change to the requirement can be easily made to be changed or completely or consistently while retaining the structure and style then srs should be traceable that is if the origin of each of the requirement is clear and if it facilitate the referencing of each requirement in future development or enhancement documentation IEEE has published some guidelines and standards when we write a system requirement specification this headings of the standard are shown here whenever we prepare a software requirement specification after the requirement study it is always good a standard to follow all these headings in the requirement specification